Good evening, I'm Rapstein, and here we are just after 6 p.m. Central Time for your financial market wrap-up, and this wrap-up is for Thursday, and we're at the 2nd of November, 2023, a melt-up day in the stock indices. They just took off, and they kept going and going and going to the upside. What they really said, and just listen, is you've got a trading bottom low for the month of November. Mark off on your chart to November lows in stock indices. Those are trading bottoms. That doesn't mean they can't be taken out again, but you've negated the downtrend. I didn't say you began an uptrend. You, with this rally, threw yourself out of the bear market and there was short covering, people saying, I've been waiting for that, I wanna jump in. They were jumping in one way or the other. There's lots of news going on. In the House of Representatives, uh, Speaker Johnson got his uh, bill passed. Uh, one that the, the president has threatened to veto immediately where he wants to throw out tax money, I applaud him on that for the IRS auditors, uh, and give that money to the state of Israel in the way of $14 billion. It's not going to pass. In the Senate, they'll look at it. They're trying to come up with their own bill to give money to Israel, Ukraine, and the borders. Um, and they want to do it in a different way. And they also want to eliminate certain things. I think they'd get along with the House to throw out the tax money. In other words, if you remember, the Biden administration got $80 billion for the IRS to revamp themselves, go after people for audits and so on. And I think what uh, it just sits on everybody in a, in a what? Election year coming up? <laughs> Buy votes? You know what I'm saying. That, that's how the world works. The president has his hands full. Uh, five mayors, ours from Chicago, went to Washington, hat in hand. We need money. We can't handle the migrants. It's costing us $40 million a month. In addition, the robberies in Chicago are so bad, and they are, and uh, they're smashing in windows with cars. Cars have become the new projectiles, and they just keep ramming windows until they can smash and grab everything that they want. Carjacking seems to be down. This is now the new sport that they're doing. And police, well, it's a joke. You know, you get to these liberal cities, which we are. And I saw today, one Venezuelan that came over the border has been arrested four times since March. And they keep letting it out on his own recognizance. The police have seen him steal things and they, they go to court and nah. The judge says, we'll let him back. He'll, he'll be a good boy. He's 19 years old. You're telling me that's going to work. Okay. I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm reading headlines and cracking up because I know what it is. Uh, the systems don't work anymore, folks. We have to go back to the right, get off center, get off left, go back to the slight right, and then bring it back center. This doesn't work. But Five different mayors going because they can't run their cities. They have no money. So they each one wanted about a billion and a half to five billion dollars to be able to get everything going. And they got what they wanted. The president took 345 million, divided it amongst 50 cities, added some new ones to get to there. And that's what they're going to get. You got to be, you have to laugh at it, okay? This president is out of contact with reality. He has no idea what's going on. All right, so we take a look at the E-mini S&P and how the market came down and we're getting a bounce in it. That's where you're at. Nothing goes straight down. But does that look bullish to you? So I realize you're all fired up, everybody. Does that look bullish to you? If it does, I wanna take your charting course, okay? What we had here is a market that had stalled out over the 4,400 level, went down into that 4,100 level, and it has come back again. I get it, I get what it did. We had formed a trading bottom here. When that was taken out, we stepped to a new ladder. So now what the market is doing is it's coming back to prove to me that this market has really some leg to it, take out these highs, and I'll be a bit more impressed. Right now, it is a bear market rally, but it is one that did something fairly important. And understand how these things work. If you take a look, you had one leg, you stalled a little right here, and you made another one. Then on the way back up, and I'll do this with the swing lines if it's okay. 
I'll come right over with the same way because I, I think it reads so much better, <coughs> excuse me, with the swing line. You get to see it. Lower highs, got it, three of them. Lower lows. If you take out this number where I've got that red arrow pointing down, you've broken another leg to here. You did the same thing here, lower highs, lower lows. When you took out this leg, you got that rally. Follow me. Is that the beginning of a bull market? Bull markets have higher highs, higher lows. So what I call this is you knocked out the bear. And now the market has to decide, is it going to be bullish or bearish? Where did it go to? Let's you and I go back to yesterday. Not today, yesterday. Here we are. And here's Ira yesterday. My hair was probably a little darker, you know, you know the way I age overnight. And we're at 42.93, and that's what I would have said. There's your resistance point. Maybe you get, maybe you get to the 200-day average at 43.25. Go look at the video. I, I bet that I said something along that line. If you can get through this high, let's go there now. Kaboom, all at one time, and sort of stopping. So, there's another thing that could happen if you wanted to go just vertical in the market. Is it a possibility? Anything's a possibility. Number one, let's start here. You decide you want to be a buyer. Where would you put your stop? You're going to put it under the most recent low and risk on the trade approximately 300 S&P points. Okay, hell of a trader you are. What if the market looks at the Bollinger Band? You can see the big resistance here, 44.56 to 44.60. I don't see anything you could possibly do with that to make it work one way or the other. So not seeing it. So the logical spot in terms of chart parlance is this is probably a zone where the market has to make some determination and fight a bit. When you put momentum on it, momentum up, you were oversold, you're no longer there. Market fighting at a resistance point, and I don't see a trend. I see the end of a down leg. Now, there's something else. You can take this chart here and say, we have a trade bottom in place. Why not? We can come back to the S&P. Why not call that a trade bottom? I think you can for both of them. And say, okay, like we had here. Until that's taken out, the odds favor that the market might get into this best part of the year, November and December, giving you rallies into your end and not take those out. You still have to do a certain amount of restructuring. Nothing has really changed. Interest rates have not come down. All the central banks have not changed their opinion. Bank of England joined in, no interest rate hike. European Central Bank, no interest rate hike. Bank of Japan, no rate hike. U.S. Federal Reserve, no interest rate hike. Norge Bank, no interest rate hike. I can keep going but none are lowering the rates of the big banks. Let's understand that. They're in a pause right now. It's this. Let's see what all our work has done. I don't blame them. It's a good time to do it. I have a hard time thinking they're all going to be Scrooge and come out for Christmas and at their next bank meetings go, no, we're going up rates again. They, they would have to if everything got crazy. In other words, crazy being the economy just picked up too much steam and inflation stuck its head up. We don't know what inflation is going to do on this. Here's what we do know. Higher high, lower low, nothing to do there. Higher high, lower low, same thing. If you want to reach next resistance area, more likely the market wants to fight at the 18-day average of closes. In the Dow, lower low, higher high, same identical thing, and getting very close to getting overbought. Any reading over 70 will be overbought. And the weakest of the markets even joined the parade, the Russell. And it got back over the 18-day average, and it too is going to, I miss putting the arrow there. You'll have an arrow up there, higher, high, lower, and low, and you have to remove that one. You lost the reading, and you made it already to the objective of the 18-day average. Could it go higher? Of course it could. Should it? No. Why? Because these stocks that make this up are the most sensitive, the absolute most sensitive to high interest rates, which we have. 
Yes, there's a correction in them, but nothing that I've seen that is being caused on that correction by central banks. More the economy just going like anything else. They got pretty high on the rates and the market's pulling back. That's where we're at. In the 10-year note, lower and low. And with today's action, let me actually walk you back to yesterday because that's where the, all, everything really set itself up. Do you Watch this. As of yesterday, you had a lower and low, higher high. You left the downtrend. If you keep going, the Bollinger Band's a likely target, and the battleground could always end up the 18-day average of closes. And look what you did. You tell me you didn't make an attempt at that. That's what this is about. Five-year note, the identical thing. Identical thing. No trend to speak of right now, but trying to get up there. Are you out of the downtrend? You are. You are. In both the 10 and the 5 year, you are out of the downtrend. If you count the trend higher highs, higher lows, or lower highs, lower lows, you don't have that on either of those charts. In the dollar, I just went through the exercise with you yesterday saying you got up, you got to the, Bollin to the Bollinger Band top, and eventually you fell back to the bottom. In the process, you created the sideways action. When you get that, you rarely get follow through. You spin your wheels. You don't see that. I assume you do see it. And what happens is the market's now deciding, hmm, is this a base for me to go higher into the 111 area maybe? Or is it a top where I'm overdone and I have to come back down to these moving averages over time? The decision process is underway. In the euro, it's the same thing. It's just a flip-flop. You tell me you're not caught right here in that sideways action. Everybody that's buying that band is getting behind the market like that. Could this market be saying, I'm a base and I want to go up here? Or is it a top and I want to crack the 100 level? Those are the parameters that are being asked right now. In the British pound, the market's bullish. I can't believe I just said that. Bullish. Until you get back under the low here of 120.98, I think the pros are buying now at 121.74, but, but, what, where are you? What kind of pattern is this? This is that pattern that chews you up. And I mean chews you up. I run from these patterns. This is sideways action making a decision, what is the next move? It is typically the pattern where your equity does this. Because you're looking for it to continue, it doesn't. You look for it to continue down, it doesn't. It just keeps whipping back and forth. I can't run for the door fast enough when I see that pattern. In MBTX, which is Bitcoin, I, I, you know, I, I see this market as bullish. Lose the red line under 79, I, I wouldn't want you long. But I think the pros are buying it right here, and I think they're all waiting for the event being that the SEC approves a series of ETFs that are based on spot. Will that carry the market? Probably. All right. It's already taken the market from here. This was base building. When you come back to it, what did I just give you an exercise in in the currencies? Dollar, euro. Did I not say this type of action? You get spun around. Eventually, it breaks out one way or the other. In this case, it was to the upside. Then we get to the Brent WTI oil. Well, you're stuck between the 460s and 420s. That means it's everything status quo. It hasn't changed. Now, we're still in a bearish pattern, not bullish. Do you go home this weekend long because you think something worse is going to happen in the Middle East? Or do you say, I've already seen since October 7th, the invasion. I don't think anything new is happening. Why am I going to load up on positions when nothing's going on other than Israel, the Palestinian people, and Hamas fighting? That's where you're at. And that's what I think is going on now. So prior to this, every Friday, I would think that the market sees a lot of buying in energy and gold. Not convinced it's there anymore. Now I think the market's more towards one of the fundamentals of the market. 
Lower high, lower low, still bearish with resistance at 87.71. You have to got that high to break that pattern. It's too oversold for me. If you were sitting next to me and said, I were, what, what do we do? I'd go, nah, it's too oversold. Why deploy money when you have an oversold market? Any reading under 30 is oversold. You have to be both numbers under 20 to embed. I don't like that. I have the same identical problem in the, in the um, December crude. I'm looking at support here. Now you're down to 80.38, come on, that's an interesting number. Why? Okay, let's go back a day. You got down today to 80.22. 80.24 is the green line, the 100-day average. You wanna sell a 100-day average thinking it's just gonna go crashing through it? It can, but it's rare. That thing's been there, it's waiting as a support zone, and my guess is, my guess, many algorithms are built saying, first time you hit number like a 100 week, a 100 day, a 200 week, a 200 day moving average, I don't think we wanna keep our position on, we wanna lighten up, get out, whatever they write the program to do. That's what I believe goes on. Now in the heating oil, got lower and low, higher high. I'm seeing sideways action. Seasonally, this is a week. I, please listen, I know it gets cold out, but it's where the market typically weakens. Are we trending in any manner to trade it? No. Are we bearish? No. Are we bullish? No. I don't know what to do with that. In the gas market, I see lots of resistance. I told you as we were coming up, I thought you'd be fraught with resistance at the 18, the 100, 200 days. So far, I'm not wrong. So far, that's the case. Uh, today's energy storage, I was looking, they were looking for 80 billion cubic feet. They got 79, the market didn't even deal with it. So what do you do in markets like this? How do you, how do you try to grab something and work with them? Well, after a big day like today, this is what I turn my attention to. I used to teach day trading, I've taught point and figure trading, so many different variations. Pivot points are just super cool. And it was taught to me by one of the, I think the best that, that did it, I can't mention his name, but uh, I think he was quite good. He used to manage money in, in my firm in the 80s and 90s. And we couldn't give him enough money. How's that? We couldn't give it. He, he got too big for the market. But this technique he was using, and then he taught it to us and whoa, it was because he moved on to something else in time. He got bigger than the market is what actually happened. But what you're looking for is that center line. And from there, the market starts moving up and you have resistance points to sell into, that's your cover zone, or points to buy into. But if you add momentum studies with it, it gives you another edge. So I created a video with it. And you already have these studies. Now, what you don't have is my version of the momentum, all right? You'll have your own, but mine is modified. And my people that use our charting software will get it. So when you get the course, and it's free to you, uh, tell our brokers you want to uh, work with our charting software. If you haven't used it before, we'll give you a free trial to it. Follow the videos, see what it is, and then try to follow me in the morning in my morning subscriber video because I go through some of this stuff from time to time. But primarily pivot points, I stay away from it. Here, here's how I use them. Let's assume I tell my clients, my paying clients for the private videos where I say buy here, sell there. And I'm looking at a number and I go, darn, it may not hit there. What's, I go, what's the pivot? And I'll go to the pivot, I go, that's why it's not getting there. And sometimes I'll edge the order up or down to try to get the fill. How do you get this? irapstein.com, free offers. Move your cursor up here, give it a click. You'll see the icon. Free offers will take you right there. I'm Ira, you have a good day. I'll talk to you in the morning.